Scotch Flakes program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Somebody says what America needs is more smiles for breakfast. So here's your old friend, Doc Wilson, right on the job with news of how to achieve more breakfast smiles. Perfectly simple. Just serve more tempting, satisfying breakfast. Breakfasts that feature grape nuts flakes. Now, perhaps the best way to describe grape nuts flakes is that they give you such a feeling of well-being with which to start the day. Grape nuts flakes start right in tempting the eye, then they tempt the taste. Crisp, toasty brown texture, malty rich, sweet as a nut flavor. The famous grape nuts flavor in toasty brown flake form. But don't forget, grape nuts flakes are a whole grain cereal. So beneath all their crisp, lighthearted goodness, there's plenty of hearty, whole grain nourishment. So for more smiles, per family, per breakfast, per budget, better make it thrifty grape nuts flakes every morning. Rochester, there's nothing like spring in Southern California. Uh -huh. <laughs> Where else can you see flowers in full bloom in the middle of April? Uh -huh. <laughs> Where else can you sit out in the open beside your swimming pool and feel those hot rays beating down? You better turn off that sun lamp, boss. You're cooked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I've had enough. I don't want to get too much all at once. I'm the type that freckles. Me too. But you'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Rochester, pull the sun lamp back in the bushes and cover it with palm leaves. Leave it right out in the open, boss. The heck with the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Covered with palm leaves. By the way, Rochester, how's our victory garden coming along? Oh, fine, boss. Mr. Coleman's chickens were over early this morning and weeded it for us. <laughs> Ronald Coleman's chickens? Rochester, I told you to fix that hole in the fence. I did. Even the big fat ones can get through now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean block it. Those darn chickens will scratch up all the seeds. Let's get this straightened out, boss. Is our objective carrots, peas, or fried chicken? <laughs> carrots and peas, vegetables. Now block up that hole. Okay, I'll cover it with a frying pan. Use a piece of wire. <laughs> wire. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. You well enough to be outdoors now? Oh, sure. The doctor told me to get plenty of fresh air, so I thought I'd stretch out here in my bathing suit. Bathing suit? Is that thing a bathing suit? Of course. Well, you ought to get a new one. They're not wearing them with bloomers anymore. <laughs> I've got helium in these bloomers. I'm not going to sink. Besides, the moss chewed the elbow out of your left sleeve. Mary, it so happens that I lost the elbow out of that sleeve when attacked by a man-eating shark in Lake Michigan. A shark in Lake Michigan? All right, it was a perch. <laughs> in, in mating season, they're vicious. <laughs> Anyway, Mary, isn't it, isn't it beautiful out here today? Look at those birds. Aren't they cute? <laughs> They're 
There's always a louse in every crowd. <laughs> what is that for? Well, I don't blame him. The idea of having a penny peanut machine out here for birds. <laughs> That's for people, not birds. We had a worm machine out here, but they crawled out for nothing. <laughs> I gotta have that fixed. Are you going in for a dip in the pool, Miss Livingston? Uh, not now, Rochester. I think I'll wait till later. If you're smart, Mary, you'll go in now. Oh, that's right. The prices change at 12 o'clock. <laughs> not that, but the pool gets crowded later in the afternoon. We have the same prices all day. I just got a load of that silly sign you got out front. Swim at Benny's for 20 pennies. <laughs> Mary, I have a lovely pool. There's no reason why I shouldn't share it with people. Naturally, I have to make a nominal charge to pay for the... Here comes a customer, boss. Oh, yes. Pull those palm leaves off the cash register. Well, good morning, young man. Good morning, Mr. Benny. Is your pool open yet? Yep. This is the first day of the season, and you're the first customer. Oh, boy, the first customer. Then I get the free swim. No, no, I'm sorry, young man. I've discontinued that policy this year. <laughs> uh, sorry. That's all right. The whole world is changing. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Well, here's my 15 cents. See you later, Mr. Benny. Oh, oh, just a minute, bud. On account of the laundry situation, I'm making a small charge for towels this year. That'll be 20 cents in all. But I brought my own towel. I'm sorry. You'll have to check that. But, Mr. Benny... You see, kid, you see, if I let people bring in towels, I won't know who's taking mine out. <laughs> Next, please. Next. There's no one behind him. Quiet. Uh, Twenty cents out of a quarter. Here's your nickel change, kid. Here, take your nickel. Keep it. You'll think of something. <laughs> take it. Oh, attendant, show this gentleman to his locker. Yes, sir. Right this way, sir. Can I bring you a scotch and soda, sir? Rochester. See that he gets just one towel. Remember last year, there were a lot of them missing. Yes, sir. No, Mary, I have a feeling this is going to be my best season. Well, I think you opened too early. It's pretty chilly yet to go in swimming. Oh, there's a little ice around the edge of the pool, but out in the center, it's all open water. Uh-oh, here come some more customers. It's Don Wilson and Phil Harris. Well, they better be customers if they know what's good for them. Well, good morning, gentlemen. Welcome to Benny's Bathing Pool. Hiya, Jackson. Mary. Hello, Jack. How's your cold coming along? Oh, I feel fine, Don. I'll be back on the program tomorrow as Master of Ceremony. Ain't we going to have Orson Welles on the show? Definitely not. I'm going to handle the show myself. Back to the corn, huh? <laughs> Bill, for a guy with a wife, a baby, and no talent, you're taking an awful chance. <laughs> Give me 20 cents. You're going in for a swim. Swim in that icy water? What are you trying to do? Sober me up? <laughs> Isn't so cold, Phil. I dove in myself this morning, didn't I, Rochester? Yeah, but that quarter on the bottom of the pool turned out to be a bottle cap. <laughs> well, the way the light hit it, it really fooled me. How about you, Don? Are you going in for a swim? Oh, uh, I don't know, Jack. The water in the pool seems awfully low. Believe me, Don, when you get in, Mary and I will have to move to higher ground. <laughs> now, give me 40 cents for you and Phil. Okay, here you are. Thank you. Take those lockers, number three and five there, on the end, fellas. Okay, Jackson. Well, three customers already. It isn't even noon yet. <laughs> oh, for Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, what are you doing with that? <laughs> Rochester, what are you doing with that chicken? What's that, boss? I said, what are you doing with that chicken? I was just searching it to see if it had any towels. <laughs> Throw that bird over the fence. Okay. So long, lunch. <laughs> Rochester, if I told you once, I told you ten times, don't annoy Mr. Coleman's chickens. If any of those hens are missing, he'll blame us. That's what you said about his grapefruit, and he has yet to mention it. <laughs> well, it so happens, Rochester, that the grapefruit hit the ground on my side of the fence. Yes, sir, that coal shoot worked out fine. <laughs> now, Rochester, if you don't... Well, here comes Dennis. Hello, kid. 
Sorry I'm late, Mr. Benny. Are there many customers here? No, only three so far. Good, then I'll have time for a dip in the pool first. Dennis, if you read your contract with Benny Bathing Pool Incorporated, you will find that Clause B stipulates that you are to supply entertainment whether our customers here or not. Now, let's have a song. But, Mr. Benny, that contract also says that I'm supposed to be the lifeguard. So what? Well, gee, if I'm the lifeguard, I'd better learn to swim. I worry about things like that. <laughs> Look, it's sing your song, bring in some customers. You can learn to swim later. Now, go ahead. Let's have your song. Dennis. In fact, I want you to do that song on the uh, program tomorrow. Okay. Can I go in the pool now, Mr. Benny? Yes, but don't dive in the shallow end. I've got rice planted there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, kid, I've been meaning to, uh, to talk to you about something. I heard you on the Eddie Cantor program last week. How was it? I wasn't home that night. <laughs> Naturally. Now, Dennis, who gave you permission to go on Cantor's program? Orson Welles, that's who. <laughs> Orson Welles! <laughs> well, watch it, kid. Or from now on, you'll be working for Orson Welles. Now, go for a swim before you think that over. <laughs> you know, I got a great idea, Mary. What my pool needs is a little glamour. Do you think, uh, you think you could get some of your girlfriends to come over? Well, I don't know, Jack. Sure you could. Call up Barbara Stanwyck and Ann Southern and Claudette Colbert and fight them over for a swim. Of course, I don't think I ought to charge them, do you? Look, Jack, if 
you get those gals in your pool, you can bottle the water and sell it for $10 a quart. <laughs> Where can you get quarts nowadays? <laughs> There's a shortage, sister. Well, what do you know? The sun is finally coming out. <laughs> yeah, why don't you take off your galoshes and tan your tootsies? Mary, stop making fun of my ensemble, will you? Uh-oh. Hey, boss, here comes that crazy board of yours. Rochester, how many times do I have to tell you that Mr. Billingsley is not crazy? He ain't, hey. Did you see him at breakfast this morning? No, what happened at breakfast? He swallowed a raw egg and then drank boiling water for three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he was in a hurry, that's all. Well, hello, Mr. Billingsley. Hello, Mr. Benny. One of the bloomer girls, I see. <laughs> no. No, no, Mr. Billingsley. This, uh, uh, this is a bathing suit. I'm out here drinking in the sunshine. Drinking in the sunshine. I'll get a bottle and join you. <laughs> oh, you misunderstand. I mean, I'm out here getting a tan. Old Sal just came out. Oh, yes. Old Sal Wurzel. Been east, hasn't he? <laughs> I'll never get out of this. I better change the subject. By the way, Mr. Billingsley, Mr. Billingsley, I see you have your bathing suit on. Are you going for a plunge? Oh, I'd love to, but I left my plunger at the Mocambo. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Oh, she's living in Anaheim. <laughs> Good old Mr. Billingsley. By the way, Rochester, he's supposed to pay his board today. Did you collect it? No, he said the money won't be dry till tomorrow. <laughs> That's my fault. I should never have given him that printing press for Christmas. Hey, kids, get a load of Don and me in these bathing suits. Yeah, don't we look like a couple of Adonises? Don, you alone look like a couple of Adonises. <laughs> Say, Phil, that's an unusual bathing suit for a man to be wearing. Where'd you get it? Ain't it a beaut? Alice wore it in her last picture. <laughs> Alice Faye wore that suit? Somehow I knew, Phil, it doesn't inspire me. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah I'll never be elected Miss Brooklyn Navy Yard, would I? <laughs> no, but you might get runner-up on Miss Boyle Heights. <laughs> Well, what are you waiting for, Don? Aren't you going to jump in the pool? Oh, I don't think so, Jack. The water looks pretty cold. Oh, come on. Jump in, Don. Take a chance. Come on, Dante. What are you waiting for? In you go. Look out, Don. He's going to push it. Oh, Phil, stop that. What are you... Oh, <laughs> Phil, stop this. Well, come on. Jump in. Okay, jump in. Okay, here I go. Oh, oh, watch it, Mary. Watch it. Watch what? Get up on the chair. Here comes the wave. <laughs> victory garden. Uh, your, your garden's all right. But say, Jack, what's Rochester putting up in the middle of it? Where? Well, I'll be darned. Rochester, take that off. What boss? Take that off the scarecrow. What boss? The crows here in Beverly Hills are very ritzy. I don't care. Take my tuxedo off that scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> now take it off. Your diamond stick pin, too? <laughs> Everything. I want that tuxedo. Suppose I win the Academy Award next year. What'll I wear to the banquet? If you win the Academy Award, you can go in your underwear. Who else will be there? <laughs> See, I'm liable to win the award for tomatoes alone. My garden keeps on the way it's going. Oh, you're some farmer. You and your silly experiments. Oh, they're not so silly. Remember last year? You spent a sprinkled cheese all over the ground and tried to raise all rotten potatoes. <laughs> Sure, I sprinkled cheese. I had an idea. <laughs> what are you giggling about? Every other gardener around here had trouble with potato bugs, but you had mice. <laughs> All right, I still say it doesn't hurt to experiment. Say, Mr. Benny, pardon me for interrupting, but would you Just mind... Just a minute, I... Dennis. You know, Mary, I wouldn't laugh about my garden if I were you. I might turn out to be another Luther Burbank. Another who? Burbank. Luther Burbank. Oh, yeah, they named Glendale after him. <laughs> they named Burbank after him. Oh, I guess I didn't analyze it. 
<laughs> certainly didn't. Say, Mr. Benny, speaking of horticulture experiments, are you going to try out that idea I gave you? No, Rochester, no. I told you it would never work. Uh, what was his idea, Jack? Oh, Rochester wanted to irrigate the lemon trees with gin and grow Tom Collins. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it would never have worked. Now, Dennis, what was it you started to ask me? Well, can I phone my girlfriend and have her come over here for a swim? It's very important that I see her in a bathing suit. Why? Why do you have to see your girl in a bathing suit? Well, there's a rumor going around that she's got knocked knees, and I can't tell by listening. <laughs> What's, uh, what's your girl's name, Dennis? Mary Bell Buzzer. <laughs> Mary Bell Buzzer. Oh, yeah, she has got... I mean, bring her around, Dennis. <laughs> bring her around anytime. Say, Jackson, here comes your medico. My what? Your medico. That's doctor for Latin. That's Latin for doctor. <laughs> Well, hello, Doc. Well, well, and how's my little patient? Shall we take that nasty cast off your leg today? <laughs> Look, Doctor, I had a cold, you cured me, and I feel fine. Now, how much do I owe you? How much? Yes. What's my bill? Uh, just a minute. Now, where did I put that hypodermic needle? I don't need a hypodermic. I can take it like a man. <laughs> Now, how much do I owe you? Well, there was a prescription for cough medicine, which cost $2. Uh-huh. Then there were three sulfur tablets with sulfur 10 cents apiece. <laughs> <laughs> sulfur, that's $2.30 so far. What else? Uh, you bit my thermometer in two while listening to the Fred Allen program. That's a dollar and a quarter. It was worth it. Now, what's the total, Doc? Well, including six visits to your house, the whole thing comes to $45,000. <laughs> Forty-five thousand. Now wait a minute, Doc. Aren't you starting a little high? That's the only way I'll get ten bucks, and you know it. <laughs> ten bucks. Well, that's more like it. Now I'll tell you what, Doc. This is the grand opening of my swimming pool today. Now how'd you like to take a free swim? And call the whole thing even. Good. I'll dive right in now. Hey, wait a minute, doctor. Not there. That's the shallow end. <whistles> Whoop, bump my head. <laughs> doctor, doctor, come out of there. Doctor, you're ruining my rice bed. <laughs> doctor. <laughs> doctor, come out of Rochester. Put down that jacket. <laughs> doctor, come out of that pool. Rochester, put down that. Rochester. Doctor. Doctor. Rochester. <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly what happened yesterday at the grand opening of Jack's swimming pool. That's right, Dom. My rice bed was ruined, but we had fried chicken for dinner. Play, Phil. <laughs>
loved coffee, I love tea, played by Phil Harris and his boys, who have yet to drink coffee or tea out of anything but a saucer. <laughs> I might even have said, who have yet to drink either coffee or tea. <laughs> but I've been sick and I'm sweet now. <laughs> yeah. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have something of great interest uh, to all of you. In a few moments... You better be sweet. What? Look, Jackson, I don't care whether you've been sick or not. Lay off them wisecracks. In a few moments, ladies and gentlemen... From now on, be a gentleman. If you can't say something derogatory about my boys, don't say nothing. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll be derogatory. And now, ladies and gentlemen... You don't even know what derogatory means. Derogatory? Derogatory means tending to or the nature of derogation, disparagement, or detraction. Uh, Dennis, that's Don Wilson's line. I thought there was something wrong here. Ah, <laughs> uh, folks, what other program has such bottlenecks? <laughs> what a dodo. Wait a minute, Jack. You don't appreciate Dennis. I think he's a very nice boy. Sure he's a nice boy, Mary, but he doesn't have to... Why, Loretta! Oh, for heaven's sake, Loretta Young, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we've been expecting you, Loretta, and folks, the few words that Miss Young has to say to us are of vital importance. Thank you, Jack. Here's something I would like to ask everyone to think of. To think of when you go to bed tonight. Think of this as you lift the window and smell the night air and look out at the stars. Think of this. There are thousands of little shacks in the Philippines that are empty tonight. There are thousands of little cottages like yours in Yugoslavia, Greece, China, Russia, empty tonight. Where have all the people gone? Why didn't you know? They are dead. You are still alive. Your blood is warm. A face you love is there on the pillow in the dusk of the room. And everything is so quiet. Still and, and beautiful. That's worth saving, isn't it? Others are dying in order to save it for you. Then is our country asking too much when it asks you to become a part of the second war loan? Thirteen billion dollars for attack, for the invasion of Europe. How much can you spare? How much can you invest? How many war bonds can you buy today? Well, Ask yourself those questions as you stand at your window tonight and smell the fresh, clean night air and look out at the stars. Origin, Drexel 721. What you said has brought home to us the importance of buying war bonds. Thank you. Seven. You're reading about them in the papers, you're hearing about them on the radio. The basic seven groups of foods which our new national nutrition program tells us we should all have every day. And featured in this basic seven are whole grain cereals. Cereals such as grape nuts flakes. Yes, delicious toasty brown grape nuts flakes are a whole grain cereal, the kind of food your government urges you to eat at least once a day. Every serving of grape nuts, flakes, and milk provides whole grain nourishment, including minerals, proteins, vitamins, and carbohydrates. Besides, grape nuts, flakes are plentiful, thrifty, unrationed. So do as Uncle Sam urges you to do. Get the basic seven into your daily diet, including more whole grain cereals. And for tops and delicious flavor, make it grape nuts, flakes. Remember, you don't give up a single precious ration stamp when you buy grape nuts, flakes. Good night, everybody. Jack Benny program is written by Bill Maher and Ed Malloy. <laughs>